Hello everyone and welcome back to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video I've got a bit of something for everybody. At the end of the previous video I asked whether the viewers wanted to see more programming content, which a few people have been really asking for, uh, or whether we should continue with the hardware uh, content that I've been doing. And I got a mixture of responses. Some people really love the programming and others are really into the hardware. So I've got an announcement today on the programming side, which I'll get to shortly, uh, but uh, the main hardware content for today is going to be about the Plus Hard Card. And this follows on the heels of a really interesting uh, video on Adrian Black's channel, Adrian's Digital Basement 2, his second channel, uh, where he did a teardown uh, of one of these Plus Hard Card 20s. And I learned a lot of really interesting stuff which inspired me to go back and look at these drives again. Before I get into all of that, I want to make this programming announcement which I'm personally really excited about and I hope that at least some of the viewers on the channel will also. So every now and again I get asked on the PC Retro Tech channel in the comments section can you make a tutorial explaining how you did this uh, programming uh, or how to do this from the very beginning because I didn't follow uh, the kind of summary that you gave on the main channel and sometimes even when I show some hardware on the channel people want to see me program it. So uh, what I've done is created a, a new channel. Uh, so don't worry, the main channel is not going anywhere and it's going to have exactly the same amount of content uh, this is a channel for tutorial style videos. Now I originally intended to have a few of these on the main channel uh, from the very beginning but unfortunately the uh, algorithm really punishes this kind of stuff. Uh, for example, uh, these three videos that I've already put up have been up for a few hours and uh, there are zero views so far. So uh, YouTube's not going to promote this kind of material because it's not their standard fare, the entertainment platform style stuff. Uh, so of course, uh, you know, most of the retro channels are walking that fine line between providing some kind of entertainment and providing some kind of educational value. Uh, here I dispense with all of that. Uh, there's no entertainment here. These are not animated videos. Uh, there's no music or anything that would be entertaining. It's just information for people who really want to learn how to do stuff how to get down in the nuts and bolts. So there should be three kinds of videos that will start appearing here. There'll be ones for absolute beginners who want to start with no knowledge at all. It's their very first time uh, picking up an assembler or a compiler and doing any programming. And they really want to do it, but uh, they don't have good resources to start. Uh, then there'll be stuff here for intermediate people, people who know roughly how to program, uh, but want to see how to do uh, more interesting things. For example, this will be a series on CGA graphics programming. And then I plan to add some advanced videos with some really advanced techniques, uh, ones that you actually really wouldn't find, even with Google, uh, without a lot of searching. Uh, and there will also even be some stuff that I've actually developed myself, uh, which I'm finally ready to show. Uh, so uh, there will eventually be playlists here. Uh, and it's going to take a while to fill in all the gaps here. I need to produce this content in a way that's interesting for me as well. So I have to have a mix of uh, basic stuff and advanced stuff just to keep my own interest in this. And I guess eventually one day uh, I'm going to probably want to set up a Patreon or something for this. But at the moment um, that's all free and uh, I'm not uh, doing anything like that. I have a full-time job so I don't need to. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, I'm going to add to these quite quickly. These are uh, relatively easy to produce compared to a main channel video. Uh, so I reckon there'll be another three or four of these probably by the time we have the next channel video. Uh, so have at it and enjoy. Uh, I hope this is useful for some of you. And don't worry, I know that this uh, channel is not going to take off in a big way. It's not going to get thousands and thousands of views. Uh, this is something that uh, YouTube won't promote uh, on its own. So I'll mention it every now and again on the channel uh, just to advertise it to new subscribers to let them know that it's there. And uh, also if there's something interesting 
uh, that relates to the channel video, the PC Retro Tech channel, uh, then I'll mention that as well. So enjoy, and I'm really looking forward to producing these videos. Uh, just expect something very, very basic in presentation. It should be clear and clean. Uh, there'll also be lots of resources uh, for you to look up in the uh, description of each video, uh, but it's not going to evolve into a kind of entertainment style a channel. Now let's get back to these hard cards. Uh, these, of course, are a hard drive attached to an 8-bit controller. Uh, there were some later ones that had 16-bit connectors, but these are for an 8-bit ISA slot. Uh, so they'll go into an original IBM PC or an early XT or clone, and uh, they don't even need to have any support at all in the BIOS for hard drives. Uh, everything's uh, on this board here. Uh, and they're also a very low power device. Now, don't quote me, but I think these might even work in an original IBM PC, which only had a 63 watt supply. You definitely don't want to be putting a big old hard drive in those or you just blow the supply up. And that's one of the reasons why the XT came out. Uh, fortunately, my PC actually has an XT power supply in it, which is almost twice the wattage. And uh, so there's no problem me putting one of these in. Uh, so uh, the other thing with these is that they're incredibly unreliable. Uh, I have to agree with Adrian Black on that. Uh, I've had seven of these and not a single one has worked when I got it. Uh, so the components just fail with age in these, even when they're not being used. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to go through three of these and look at the innards and uh, we'll try and figure out why they fail. Uh, now, I've had seven of these in total, so two of them I actually got rid of. Um, they were in a really bad state of repair. I regret that now because I could have uh, salvaged some components, uh, perhaps. Uh, but uh, a seventh one was sent to me in a plastic bag internationally by the seller. And, uh, of course, it got damaged. One of the components was sheared off and the metalwork was all bent. Uh, and the drive didn't work at all when I got it. And uh, he thought that it was my responsibility to uh, get money back from the postal service, even though he hadn't actually insured the postage. Uh, so fortunately, I had uh, you know a third party involved the auction website, which disagreed with him on that occasion, and uh, I actually did get a refund. But of course, I had to return the drive to him, which means that I'm left with four of these. Uh, one of them I won't open because it partially works. Uh, the other three. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at in today's video. Now, as it turns out, one of the earliest videos on the channel is me tearing down this hard card 20. I bought this brand new. It was quite expensive, uh, but it had original packaging, uh, the original manual, uh, and even shrink wrap, never been opened. Uh, so, unfortunately, it didn't work when I got it, and that's because they degrade over time, even when they're not in use. Uh, so I opened it up and found uh, the black stopper that's used to stop the head uh, from reaching its maximum extent and banging. And uh, unfortunately these dissolve over time naturally and turn into a black goo. And you can see that in Adrian Black's video, he had the same thing. Uh, so I dissolved that out and put a little foam support in instead. And uh, that gave the head something to knock against which wouldn't stick. And uh, that actually got the drive to spring to life. Uh, but I still had some additional problems with it. The drives had delaminated on the outside of the platters. And so I had to partition that out to get a usable drive out of it, which is just a little bit under 20 megabytes now. Uh, and it does work to this day, but uh, there are still some issues with it. For example, it sticks sometimes when you start it up. Uh, it's the actual platters that are sticking rather than the heads. And uh, so you have to take it out and give it a wiggle, as Adrian Black shows on his channel, uh, to try and shift the platters around just slightly uh, to unstick them, and then you can put it back in the machine and it should spin up. Uh, but then uh, I've partitioned and formatted it when it was quite warm, and uh, so it doesn't boot from cold. You have to wait till it's uh, warmed up uh, to get it to go, and presumably something is changing size in this, as it heats up. Uh, so there's probably nothing I can do about that. So I'm not gonna open this in today's video, especially since it still works and I use it in my IBM PC with the XT supply. And uh, so I'm gonna look at the other three uh, in the video today. 
One of these drives is a hard card 40 and so it'll have two platters in it as you'll see when I open it up. Uh, but uh, I did get it to go very briefly. I actually oiled the mechanism that moves the heads which Adrian Black suggested and it did actually spring to life for a while but uh, unfortunately it still had the problem that the platters get completely stuck and this one you really have to yank them around hard to get it started uh, and then it'll spin up and come to life. But unfortunately it's uh, since completely balked. Uh, basically the uh, previous owner had split this into two drives anyway, uh, one of which uh, was 20 megabytes and the other one really just wasn't even there, uh, presumably because one of the platters is totally gone. Uh, so the other thing is I found dust inside it on the platter when I opened it up. Uh, so uh, it doesn't really matter what I do to this drive. I'm not going to be doing anything to it that hasn't already been done. Um, I'm not going to take precautions with this. The main purpose of today's video is a learning exercise to try and figure out why these drives stop working over time and if there's anything at all we could do about that as a community. And likewise, it's not going to matter too much what I do with these drives today. They're completely balked. Uh, as you can probably see from my notes here, uh, the platter in this one is degraded, uh, I think corroded, it makes a horrible sound when it spins and in fact uh, one of the heads is completely snapped off uh, and there's no way you're going to be able to repair or replace that. Uh, the wires in those are just too fine uh, to work on by hand. I'm sure this is done by machine. Uh, so this drive is never going to work again. Uh, this one has had magic smoke come out of the stepper motor I see uh, but this is actually attached as you'll see uh, to the uh, flex cable uh, which goes to the heads so you have to replace the heads as well uh, same problem you're never going to get this to go again uh, now the controller here probably also doesn't work uh, it flutters the heads uh, even when you put it on a different drive and uh, this controller is probably okay uh, no way to verify that without a working drive but uh, I have heard that the EEPROMs on these uh, go bad with time so that might be something to look into uh, but uh, in my experience, all of the drives actually die uh, before the, <laughs> the boards. So uh, getting a working controller is easy. Getting a working drive is almost impossible. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what I do to any of this today. Uh, it's not going to be a major problem. Uh, you can see I've even disconnected this one and removed the head assembly uh, from one of these. Uh, you can see that central pivot point where that rubber stopper normally is. And I had tried to repair this one. I put a bit of foam around here. Uh, but uh, this uh, black goopy stuff is really disgusting. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it really gets all over everything uh, inside the drive. Uh, it makes a mess. Um, so that's basically the main problem that these drives have as far as the heads are concerned uh, is just this needs to be replaced. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to open these today. Um, and we'll open the third one, uh, the 40 mag drive, and uh, try and get to the bottom of what else goes wrong with these drives. Now the first thing I want to talk about is how to get this cover off uh, so you can get into the internals of the drive. So I use a very short knife. I think this would be very difficult with a long knife uh, since you need to apply it really a lot of force. Uh, so I just dig it in under the, uh, the plastic material and just uh, cut and it takes ages to cut all the way around. Of course it's very easy here because this has already been removed. Uh, but you want to go all the way around and you always want to take the knife away from your body because it will slip out and you'll cut anything in its path. So you have to be extremely careful with that. Uh, if you try and lift uh, the cover and peel it off, it will snap the plastic. Absolutely will snap. Uh, so I've gotten a little bit better with this over time, but I have a number of these snapped lids. Uh, when you get inside, uh, you'll see there's screws uh, that you have to take out to get a cover off, and there's also uh, a nut uh, which has to be unscrewed before this will come off. And then we get access to the interior of the drive. The underside of the drive is also pretty tricky. Uh, this uh, plastic thing actually has a little lip on it so you have to lift it up before you can get a knife in underneath uh, to start cutting and you also have to be very careful I'll show you uh, on this one which I've already removed uh, and you can see I've uh, already snapped that one uh, there's wires in here so if you got the knife in the wrong place uh, even on the edge here you could cut those wires 
and there are components, even a flex cable here that you could uh, cut into. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, but this is the underside and uh, this is the main motor for the drive uh, to spin the platters. Uh, unfortunately you can't get that out from this side, you have to go in from the other side of the drive to get access to that. So there's not very much you can do from this side anyway, so it's probably really worth thinking about whether you want to take uh, the bottom off, uh, since there's not much you can do here except check that these components look okay. Now this is the 20 megabyte drive with corrosion. I've taken all the screws out and I'm going to take out this uh, center thing here. You can either remove the nut or you can actually just unscrew the entire uh, bolt uh, that it goes on and then you should be able to very carefully remove the cover off here. And so we see in here there's a top platter which is uh, just plastic in my case. Uh, this is not metal. Uh, and it's flexible. Uh, so I'm not going to do a full teardown of this because uh, Adrian Black has already done a very good one on his channel. You can see there's just a single head uh, pair. Uh, they sort of clamp around the, the platter uh, on the bottom platter here, which is actually made of metal, of course. And the first thing that uh, I'm going to do here is to take out uh, the plastic part on top here. Now it turns out something I learned from Adrian's channel is that this center screw here is reverse threaded so you have to turn it clockwise to get it out and I would not previously been able to get this out but after watching his video uh, I gained enough confidence to do that and so we can remove uh, this top uh, plastic bit here which just has a metal hub in it. Uh, you can see which way it lines up because uh, it actually uh, has holes that you can match up. Uh, not that that's really particularly relevant except possibly for balancing but uh, I don't see any marks on there to indicate that it's been balanced. Now if you look at this uh, platter, uh, yeah, it's, it's really uh, particularly disgusting in terms of its quality here. Uh, so I don't know whether that's delamination or whether someone's been in there and got uh, muck in there. Um, it might be uh, some of the goop from the uh, the head assembly might have got in there. Uh, who knows? Uh, but you can see this is disgusting. Uh, this should be completely uh, uniform. Uh, so this is obviously a main problem with this drive. Uh, so I actually want to take this platter out uh, so that we can have a look. And uh, these are things that you should not do. Uh, so I'm just going to do all this by hand. I'm just going to move this over because that's going to block us. Uh, you have to move this before you can move the head assembly. Now you should never move a head assembly by hand. What you're supposed to do, uh, normally it would be that way if the drive was working, uh, you're supposed to slot uh, something uh, like a a comb almost in between the head uh, prongs here and lever them apart uh, which I don't know how you do successfully without breaking these very fine wires uh, but lever them apart uh, and then you sh can move the head uh, by hand and in this particular case it doesn't actually go far enough to get it off the uh, the thing entirely. So really the only possible way to do this is to completely disassemble uh, all of this stuff here. But I'm not going to do that on this video. Uh, this is not a hard drive repair video and I'm not at all qualified to, uh, to tell you how to repair a drive. Uh, but uh, the other thing you shouldn't do of course is touch the platter. But uh, I mean what damage are we going to be able to do to this uh, given the terrible shape that it's in. Uh, so it just slips off the, the spindle here, it's just friction fit. And uh, let's take a look at the back side of this spindle. And uh, you can actually see uh, some very deep uh, cuts in the, uh, the thing around where the heads start on the platter. And this is m almost certainly why uh, this drive is not working. Uh, you can see a very deep groove around the outside here. And the reason for that becomes obvious uh, when you take a look uh, at the head assembly here. Um, I would imagine uh, one of these heads, uh, yeah, the bottom head there is completely missing. It's floating around. I don't know, uh, there it is. Yeah, so it's been snapped off completely. These get stuck to the platter 
and uh, when the heads uh, are stuck like that and the drive tries to spin up, it just breaks this head off completely. And that's probably why we were getting a really awful noise. Uh, and this big groove here is what's been scraped into the surface uh, by the missing head. Uh, it's just the prong uh, scraping. Uh, so that's exactly what's gone wrong with this drive. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be able to repair this in any way. And uh, that's a real shame. Um, it's just how these drives go eventually in some cases. Now as for the rubber stopper in this one, uh, when I opened the drive, uh, the integrity wasn't too bad. It's very soft uh, and uh, you know it's about to melt, but in other drives I found this melted all over the place and just everywhere inside the drive. Uh, so this one just needed a little bit of extra integrity and I just put some tape around it. I don't know what that green stuff is. That's actually not visible to the naked eye. It might just be a camera. Uh, artifact here, but uh, at any rate, uh, this did actually stop the head from sticking. So this uh, this arm gets stuck uh, on this, uh, even if only momentarily. It stops the drive from functioning correctly, and so normally what you have to do is replace that rubber stopper entirely uh, with something uh, that's not going to stick to the metal here. Now zooming right into this uh, damaged platter, you can easily see the big scrape in the platter on the outside here uh, where that uh, prong from the broken head has scraped into the platter. Uh, you can also see a less obvious scrape in the inner portion here and that's where the head actually stops when the drive powers down. Uh, so it really scrapes a groove into that over time and uh, unfortunately there's just nothing you can really do about that. Uh, that's at the end of the drive when that happens. Uh, so uh, the other thing that you can see here is along here, along this region, uh, is a kind of uh, pattern that looks like the head has actually j been jumping on the tracks. So I don't know whether there's some kind of obstacle here that has jumped over and causing it to bounce uh, along. Uh, but this doesn't look good as well, and of course you can see all of this, uh, well I don't know what it is, whether it's oil or delamination. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually just clean this off with some IPA and uh, just see whether we can get a better look at what might have actually gone wrong here. Uh, now, uh, obviously you don't want to be uh, putting chemicals on your hard drive platters. Uh, this is just uh, obviously a dead platter and uh, we just want to learn a little bit about what's going on here. Now just so you know, uh, I didn't raid a hospital to get this IPA. I actually purchased it a couple of years ago. And similarly, my rag here is uh, malware themed. Uh, but let's just wipe this uh, clean and uh, we'll get a bit of a better view of uh, what this looks like. Uh, it looks like I'm also going to have to figure out how to dry the IPA off. It looks like that will leave a residue on the, uh, the platter. But I think we're getting uh, a much better view of that now. Uh, it just seems to move it around on the platter rather than take it off, so I'm not sure whether I will get it completely off. It is going to leave a residue behind. Uh, so at any rate, uh, that's what it looks like uh, when it's cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we can certainly still see this, uh, this inner groove uh, quite clearly and the outer groove as well. I don't really see very much else uh, on this uh, at the moment. So perhaps uh, the main portion of this platter is actually working. Just to get it back to more of a showroom shine, so to speak, I just buffed this with the palm of my hand, which of course will add uh, finger oil uh, all over the platter. It's certainly something you do not want on a hard drive platter. In fact, I shouldn't even be touching this with hands. I should have gloves on. Uh, but just for science here, I shined it up a little bit. And I can now see some tramp marks here uh, outside of that big deep groove uh, that we saw previously uh, running around here basically. Uh, so there's really extensive damage right across this entire platter. And this is the other side of the platter which had the uh, presumably working head and you can see there's uh, all sorts of gunk on here and uh, it's even a little bit sticky to touch so I don't know what that is. It must be some kind of oil perhaps come out of the motor or something like that. I'll give this the same treatment anyway and we'll see what we have once it's cleaned up. Now this is the other drive. Uh, this is the uh, assembly 
uh, that blew up, there's a chip here which had smoke come out of it. Uh, I could smell a very bad smell and I traced it down to that component. Uh, this is the little uh, mirror uh, that reads the track information on this little grooved piece of glass in here. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do in this one is again take the, uh, the uh, platter out. Uh, so I'll remove the plastic and I've just pre-loosened this so it'll be easy. It's actually quite difficult to get this to unscrew. Uh, but I did that off video and uh, I'm just going to remove uh, this uh, set of heads as well. I'm just going to very gently slide that out. Uh, this will come all the way out because uh, there's nothing jamming it. And so I can now take off the top one here and that platter looks to me to be in much better condition. Uh, I don't know how visible it is on video here. Actually I'll just rotate this around very carefully. Uh, there is actually uh, a little mark here I don't know anything about that, but otherwise the platter in this doesn't look too bad. So I think I'm going to take a few precautions when I remove this platter and uh, see if I can get it out without damaging it. Uh, maybe I can actually use that in another drive. Now in order to get the platter out, uh, I'm going to use a little hook here under the edge of the drive just to lever it. I don't want to touch it with my fingers. Uh, it won't matter if I get some small scrapes in the very, very outer portion of this drive because that's never used. It could be a nucleation site for delamination, of course. Uh, there's always that to consider and maybe I should be using something plastic instead. Uh, the other thing I've done though is I've put a plastic bag over my hand just to prevent sweat and grease uh, when I touch the disc. Uh, I'm going to need to lever it up on that side first so I can get my finger under it and uh, then I'm going to have to hook the other side uh, with this out of the way. So it's a pretty complicated uh, process, but let's see if we can manage to do it. So I'm going to stick the hook under this side here and uh, sort of lever it uh, in place. So now I've got good purchase on that side. And I'm going to lever it down first, uh, just so that I can get my finger under the other side. And now I should be able to lift the platter out. Uh, being very, very careful. The scraping sound you can hear is just the uh, the center ring. And I'll put it on uh, a piece of plastic uh, so we don't get any grease or so on on it. Uh, so this seems to have been successful. I'm only going to be able to do this once on film. Uh, so uh, let's hope we can get something out of this platter. Well, even after using IPA a couple of times and uh, buffing it with my hand, uh, there's an outer mark here, which I'm fairly sure has to be delamination. Uh, it's really uh, eaten into the outside of the, the disc here. Uh, so this platter is really totally ruined. Uh, I don't see uh, very deep marks anywhere on this. Uh, so maybe uh, this one hasn't had so much damage from the head uh, grinding a groove into it. Uh, but there appears to be other damage here that's presumably caused by uh, just the age of the disc and you know heating up and cooling down many times uh, through use. This is the other side of the platter and there's not much damage here either. There is a couple of marks here near the center and there's a few scrapes along the drive but I think these are mostly just uh, grease spots or something that's got on there. I don't think this is actually damage. I don't see any deep scrapes at least as we had on the other platter. So the likelihood is that this platter actually works. So I'm gonna very quickly wrap it up in plastic here. Uh, I probably should have had this entire operation inside a plastic uh, enclosure, but I didn't know this platter would be in such good condition. Uh, so I'll put this away for now and maybe later we can use it in uh, one of the other drives. Now here's the thing that I don't completely understand. So these drives uh, almost all suffer from some kind of stiction. Now I do know that uh, this head assembly here, when it gets stuck on the rubber stopper, uh, will not spin the drive up properly. So uh, that is one reason why it might spin slowly, but sometimes they just stuck completely and won't even start spinning. And uh, so my guess was that this center hub uh, was getting stuck and needed greasing, but uh, this is almost frictionless. And I found this in a couple of drives now that have had stiction problems. Uh, this doesn't seem to be the issue. 
So my next best guess is that the heads themselves actually apply so much force to the platter and actually uh, get stuck on the platter. Uh, this certainly happens for sure. Um, the, as I said, the heads can actually shear off when they get stuck. Uh, but why that would happen in this drive, I don't know, since the platter wasn't in bad condition. There was that one mark right in the middle. Maybe there is some kind of goopy spot there that these uh, heads get stuck on. Uh, really hard to say, but uh, so far I, it's uh, still a mystery to me why that happens. It could be that there's a capacitor or some other issue with the drive current or something like that, uh, which causes this motor to not start spinning properly. Uh, but uh, from what I can see so far, um, there's nothing mechanical uh, that's obvious to me uh, that I can point the finger at. Well, it's time we looked at the hard card 40. Uh, so this has two metal 20 megabyte platters in it uh, with heads uh, gripping each of them, of course. Uh, this particular drive has uh, a major stiction problem. So even just shaking it with the wrist won't get it to spin uh, enough to uh, get it freed up. So you actually have to open it and turn it a little bit by hand uh, in order to free it up enough and then it should spin. Uh, it also had an issue with the uh, heads not being able to move in and out properly and uh, the rubber stopper, interestingly enough, is fine on this drive. So maybe the 40 megabyte drives uh, don't have so much of a problem with that. Uh, I'm really not sure. Uh, but what I did instead is oil this uh, central uh, bearing which I saw on Adrian's channel he suggested that and that actually did free it up enough uh, for the heads to move in and out and the drive sprang to life briefly so what I saw is that the person who had this before me had split it up into two 20 megabyte drives uh, one of which doesn't work at all so uh, presumably they knew that uh, this was faulty uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, there doesn't seem to be anything I can do to get it to go uh, so what I've done is take the platters out and uh, checked that the central hub spins freely, and it does. The motor isn't the, pr the cause of the stiction issue. Uh, but once you take those platters out, uh, you're going to have some problems with alignment when you put them back in. First of all, uh, this metal hub in the middle needs to be exactly centered. If not, it'll wobble and it cannot read the disc at all uh, when that's the case. So you do a lot of fiddling around to get this back in the exact center. Uh, the other problem you're going to have is that the platters need to be aligned with respect to one another uh, in the rotational direction. And uh, so this is not something you're going to be able to do by hand. So I'm hopeful that I can low level format this drive to get the track information back on uh, so that it's reading both tracks simultaneously uh, in the same uh, orientation. Now, uh, that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do. Uh, there is some software that came with these drives uh, that I can try out. Uh, but failing that, uh, this drive may be, uh, you know, balked for good. Who knows? Uh, anyway, that's what I'm going to work on today. And uh, I don't know whether I can do anything at all about stiction. Uh, I really don't know what's causing that. That is a complete mystery at this point. Now, of course, I know that you shouldn't run a hard drive with cover off here, but I want you to see what actually happens here. And I really don't have very much uh, in the way of choice uh, when I start this up. So let me just power it on. It'll probably make a liar out of me, but uh, normally uh, it won't spin. And indeed, that's not spinning at all. So what I'm going to go and do is just rotate it gently by hand and you'll see the normal startup sequence that it goes through. So you can see uh, just how much force I needed to use to get that drive to start spinning. That was really stuck. Uh, so I have no idea what causes that. Uh, but you'll see it makes a few different moves out to the edge of the drive there. And uh, this particular drive will initialize and it'll just say uh, eventually uh, if you try to F-disk or format it, uh, that there's some problem with the drive, it can't seek or find uh, sectors, it can't read the drive. Now this is the Hardcard 40 Divide program, which is for dividing the disk into multiple volumes, which apparently act just as though they are actual separate physical devices from the point of view of the system. 
Now, I haven't had any luck at dividing it into two volumes. Uh, it just complains that it can't find defect-free tracks uh, in the second volume. And so I'm just going to stick with one volume for now and we'll try and get the driver to uh, support the large partition in DOS. Uh, so it'll complain that the volume is larger than the maximum size DOS partition. Uh, so let's just go ahead and try and save the changes here. It says all data will be lost, which is what we want, of course. Uh, we want whatever's there to go away. And it sits there for a while uh, trying to access the disk. Um, and uh, we'll see whether it uh, complains this time. Uh, it, it, it was coming up with a message saying that uh, it needs 15 tracks in a row that have no defects in them. And uh, I tried moving the second volume about a bit. It has an option uh, if you go to custom volume def definition to change where the split is between the two volumes. And unfortunately, uh, this is what it says, unable to write volume table to disk. Uh, so it seems to me like the uh, disk itself is actually damaged uh, in a way that's beyond repair. Uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, write onto this disk at all. Presumably, uh, you know, one of the tracks where the volume table gets written uh, is actually badly damaged, uh, probably a bit from being accessed so much. So I'm going to have to pull the drive apart and take a look at these uh, platters and see whether one of the platters uh, has some damage somewhere. Well, unfortunately, this is the error message that I keep getting. Uh, it says that it can't find 15 contiguous tracks uh, at the beginning of each volume, and in particular, volume 2 uh, has defects all the way across. You can actually see the heads moving from about halfway across uh, all the way to the middle of the disc and is looking for, uh, you know, tracks that are okay, but it doesn't find them. So, uh, this is not going to work, unfortunately, and I've tried uh, switching platters, I've tried even cleaning platters, uh, well, what could I lose? Uh, so, uh, basically, when you go back to the main menu, uh, it'll say that it can't write the, uh, the, the uh, volume table and uh, basically it's just not going to play dice. Uh, interestingly when you start the machine, uh, yeah here is the message that you get, uh, interestingly when you start the machine uh, you get um, either a controller failure B or controller failure D and I suspect uh, those are the actual faces of the platter that it's talking about. I think they're labelled from the bottom of the drive to the top A, B, C, D. And uh, if it's uh, a B failure, uh, it won't even run the divide program. It'll just say that the, uh, the hard card isn't present. Uh, if it's a D failure, it'll let you run the hard card, but it won't actually um, do anything inside this program. So what I think is happening is that A and B, they're the ones that would normally be there in a 20 meg drive. It needs those to be working uh, in order for the drive to access. And uh, what it also needs is for C and D to be uh, aligned with uh, A and B. And this just isn't happening for some reason. Um, and it could be that there's uh, a misalignment of the heads or uh, a slight misalignment of the platters. Uh, it could be any number of things. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this drive has a consistent problem uh, that it will not uh, divide into volumes and I can't make a single volume out of it. Uh, so it looks to me like uh, there's nothing more I can really do uh, to repair it. That stiction issue is still a major mystery to me. We know it's not the motor. Uh, that spins freely. Uh, there is some resistance to turning it by hand, uh, but this is surely just the tension that the heads are under on the uh, platter. Uh, now, of course, that is not going to have gotten greater over time. If anything, it will have gotten less. So I don't think the tension is the issue. Of course, the heads could have some gum on them that uh, stops the disc from spinning uh, more smoothly and perhaps it detects that. Uh, but uh, I did try to dissolve anything off the heads, being very careful not to damage in any way the uh, very, very fine wires that are there. 
uh, but unfortunately no luck there. Uh, the heads uh, seem to actually stick to one another as though they're magnetized. Uh, that seems a bit odd. I can't imagine why they would uh, have magnetic heads in here. This should be electromagnet. Uh, so that's a little bit strange, but if it is magnetized in some way, uh, it could be grabbing onto the platter magnetically. Uh, so that's possibly something to investigate in future. Now, a lot of the marks on the platters actually cleaned off, uh, so I just used some IPA. Again, not recommended at all, but uh, I just wanted to see how much of that was actual damage and how much of it was uh, just bits of dust and oil and so on that have, uh, you know, been spread out across the disc over time. And it turns out that really a lot of it uh, is dust and oil and not actual physical damage. Uh, it doesn't really matter that there are grooves on the very inside and very outside because those portions are not meant to be read. So uh, I'm really not uh, clear on exactly what could be stopping this drive from writing the volume table. Uh, it seems that um, you know somehow the surface of this disc has become quite disrupted over time. Now the way that things should happen is it should start spinning and I believe uh, that it generates little air current and there's a very very finely weighted piece of plastic in here which I think moves out of the way due to the, he uh, the uh, air current or maybe even just uh, gets very very lightly brushed by the surface of the uh, disc or something like that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that works but once that pulls out uh, it pulls a lever out uh, that's holding this head mechanism so that the head mechanism can move. Uh, so it's just a safety mechanism to prevent the heads moving out uh, if the disc isn't spinning, which would of course just cause a scrape right across the reed surface. Uh, it's designed to uh, you know, allow the scraping in the middle because it has to speed up and slow down there, uh, but it shouldn't uh, be spinning uh, slowly or uh, you know, not spinning at all when the heads are moving across the surface. Uh, so I think there's some very complicated mechanism uh, that is required to get this disc spinning in the first place. Now I have had one of these drives that would spin very, very slowly without me doing anything at all. It would just spin slowly. And I can actually replicate that here. If I just put a little bit of pressure on the head, uh, when it's in the machine, uh, it will start to spin very, very slowly, which shows that it's not stuck. Uh, it can spin if it wants to, it just doesn't want to. So it makes me feel that that has to be reading something. Um, even when it's uh, stationary like this, uh, it must look for something uh, right in that inside portion and it's either not finding it or it's not able to find it because there's some damage, maybe a wire, a very fine wire is broken or something like that. Uh, but uh, basically it's still a mystery. And uh, because I don't really have any further ideas and what I can try here, uh, I'm going to have to give up today. So I did clean off the platters and a lot of those what appeared to be really quite awful scrapes uh, just wiped off. Uh, they were just bits of dust and oil uh, that had actually spread out over the disc. Uh, so they came off with IPA. Again, not something I recommend using on a disc. It will leave a residue. Uh, but I just wanted to see, uh, you know, how much of it was damage and how much of it was, uh, you know, just gunk on the disc. Uh, so anyway, I'm out of ideas for now and I think that uh, I'm going to put this drive away uh, before I actually do some real damage to it that can't be reversed. Uh, if I haven't already, and uh, look at it again at a later point if I come across any more information that might be useful. Uh, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this little look at uh, the surface of the disc and uh, how to disassemble it and uh, some ideas about what might be going on here and also just this finding that the motor itself is not stuck so there's really not a whole lot of point taking these uh, platters out as far as I can see to try and oil the motor. Uh, but that's all I'm going to be able to do uh, for this week. Uh, so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked this video and uh, hopefully we'll see you in a later video. Uh, bye!